Hello again. So in this video, we're going to talk about the treatment of idiopathic cystitis. And um, I want, want to start by going through this algorithm. Uh, flow, I like flow diagrams. I hope you do too. I find them easier to kind of get my head around. So while we're not going to particularly focus on uh, obstructed cats at the moment, you need to decide whether they're blocked or not first, because clearly a blocked cat is a life threatening injury, life-threatening disease, you've got to deal with that. But I just want to really underline that 90% of your blocked cats will either have idiopathic cystitis or plugs, and hence their disease is due to stress. You are going to unblock them, yeah, great, but if you don't approach that stress and deal with that as well, you need to deal with them as stressed cats then it's just going to come back. They're going to re-obstruct. And let's be honest, obstruction, it's stressful for the cat, it's stressful for the owner, it's stressful for us vets, and it ends up costing a lot of money. So we really need to decide um, whether or not they are the occasional, i.e. about the 10% the or so of Stone's cats, or very, very rare um, uh, urethral tumor cats, or they're block cats due to idiopathic cystitis or plugs, okay? So that's the little sideline. The other little group we need to have a little quick consideration of are the non-obstructed but older cats. Older cats aren't at particular risk of getting um, urinary um, problems other than infections. And here, infection really can play a role. So we're looking at, yes, in the vast majority of cats getting signs of urinary obstruction, less than 5% will have a urinary infection. But in your older cats, older than 10, 50% will. So they're good numbers to remember, easy numbers to remember. And so in these older cats, you really have to do a full workup, not just a short course of antibiotics. You need to find out, are they hypothyroid? Are they diabetic? Have they got kidney disease? But really it's this central uh, line of this flow diagram is where we really need to focus, and that's what we're going to focus on in this talk, and that is the approach to the cat with idiopathic cystitis. You can read it plugs into that as well, of course. The two, two interventions that we really know work are reducing the urine-specific gravity, and you need to get it down below 1035, and we'll come back to that, and environmental modification such that you can reduce stress in the environment. And you need to do both of those. One on its own is not enough. All the other interventions may work in some cats, may help in some cats, but they are much, uh, much less uh, evidence-based. And some of them have really quite a lot of evidence to show that they're not terribly effective. So getting the lower urinary um, concentration and addressing the environment are the two really important things that we need to do. To, uh, to try and prevent recurrence in these cats. And that is really important because the whole thing must be to prevent recurrence. We know from a number of studies that at least 50% of cats that have got shown signs of either urinary obstruction or just urinary pain, you know, they're idiopathic cystitis cats that aren't actually blocking, 50% will recur. 30% will reblock. 20% will be euthanized, either because of recurrent obstruction or because the owners just can't cope with...